somebody who was um, transracially adopted myself um, as a child. And um, I'm also an adopter of two girls who are now uh, 21 and 19. And it's a real big passion of mine that I don't think adopters always get the right information at the right time. And so um, I, having met um, Natalia, I wanted to give you a great opportunity to, um, to hear more about what she does, because um, I've certainly learned a lot in, in connection to um, Natalia. She runs the Organic Afro um, Facebook group, which has 4,000 members. Even almost six and a half. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> um, has lived in, in South Africa, Australia, in the UK, and um, I'm sure will tell us a, a, a bit more about about her. If it's okay, um, just give us uh, introduce yourself um, as much or as little information as, as you're comfortable with. Um, mm -hmm. But it'd be great to hear a little bit about your family ages and 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 gender I think might would be great um can I ask Nora so it's okay hi I'm uh, Nora and we have um two children a boy who's five and a half uh, who just has kind of curly hair really <laughs> <laughs> um, from that background but not very curly and then um a, a little girl who's three just gone three uh, she has a lovely hair, afro hair, <laughs> beautiful, thick Aww. and quite tightly coiled. So, <laughs> trying to anyway. <laughs> we really appreciate this. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, Susanna? Um, yeah, my name is Susanna. I have um, a son who just turned seven. Um, wow. And he is, he has both European and African background. So his hair is, um, it's curly. It, um, yeah, I would, I would describe it as curly. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and Robin. Hello. Um, and actually, Susanna and I know each other. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a son, Cody, who will turn four next month. And um, he has very curly hair. He's um, full African American, and I am Caucasian. <laughs> since you can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, very welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so, Natalia, I'll pass it on to you. Awesome. Um, I'm gonna. Am I all, all good to yeah. share the screen? Um, yeah. Uh, Let me know when it's ready. Yeah. That should be fine. Cool. Let me enter full screen here. Hopefully that's going to do that. Um, and then I can share screen. Okay. So is everyone seeing? Yeah. Screen? Cool. I'm going to enter full screen here. Um, and I'm just going to say thank you um, for having me because yeah, it's really to be working with people who are making such a huge difference in the world like you all are. Um, that's my dream to be working, you know, with people who are making a difference and you all are every single day. So um, yeah, this is just a little <laughs> presentation, part one of caring for your little one's natural Afro kinky coily curly hair. Um, I am Natalia. I'm the founder of the Organic Afro. Um, and I'm just going to take you through a little bit about me so you can kind of understand like the kind of work I do and why I do what I do um, and then we're going to go through some really important points um, like real essentials to working with natural um, kinky coily hair um, and a lot of this information will be um, I'll, I'll kind of explain it in ways that you'll be able to take what you need like for your little ones because everyone Everyone on the planet has a completely different head of hair. Um, and then to make things even more complicated, everyone has a completely different lifestyle on top of different locations. So it's really about getting the foundations right. And then you can kind of start tweaking for, you know, where you live and how active your lifestyle is. Um, and it will just give you a base 
knowledge for you to be confident in um, in doing the best you can to get that thriving head of hair on your little one's head. So if this will let me get to the next slide, I'm just gonna say really quickly, if you have any questions, put them in the chat and then um, I'm gonna try to get through all of the questions that we were asked um, in the little post. But if I do get some time at the end, I'll try to um, answer the best I can if we have some time at the end. Otherwise, just um, send me a message. So yeah, congratulations for investing in your young one's hair care, um, taking this time out of your busy schedules to like sit here and listen um, is a really huge step into making all the difference um, in your little one's life in terms of, you know, identity and confidence and self-love. Um, hair is a really huge part of identity and by taking these steps to care for their hair in a way that's going to help it flourish is also contributing to their overall well-being. So yeah, thank you for being here. Um, so I help people to learn how to care for natural hair without the struggle because I know that it's really different from what a lot of people are used to, especially if they have straight hair or if they're very used to um, using chemicals to straighten their hair. Handling Afro, kinky, curly, curly, natural hair can be like a completely different world. Um, so I just wanted to show you a little bit um, of the success that I've had with uh, families who have, um, so for instance, with Kwamina and Marie, Kwamina is a single dad who has Marie and another daughter who I haven't met, um, but they have um, African and European um, um, heritage. And when we first sort of started um, working together, Marie was only putting her hair in a bun and sort of not doing anything. She didn't want to wash it. She didn't want to comb it. She just couldn't stand it. Um, and then afterwards, um, after just some really simple advice, I was told, I just want to thank you for the amazing advice from Marie. It's already feeling and looking so much healthier. So we can see that you know, visibly her hair is much more moisturized and it's much more manageable for her because she's been able to learn um, what to do with her hair. So um, another family that I worked with was actually Tina and the twins, another family who have African and European heritage and the twins were born with different hair textures. And one of the twins actually had a much more, um, She's, she has a much more sensitive scalp than the other twin. So they really needed to figure out like how to stop, <laughs> stop them screaming from getting when they were getting their hair done because they just really didn't enjoy it. And by using the techniques that I taught, um, Tina was just saying that, you know, you've made my day. I'm currently um, preparing the girls for their hair wash and I'm, I've tried your technique and they're not screaming. So that was a huge win for that day. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm South African Mauritian. I was South African born. Um, I grew up in Australia. I live in, I live in the UK, but I also lived in, um, in New Zealand for a couple of years. And when I grew up, um, when I was growing up, I hated my hair so much. I wanted to take a pill to make it just grow straight like I just wanted I was so desperate to not have the hair that I have growing out of my head um but I have grown to love it through care and persistence um I started to embrace my natural hair when I was about 17 and it was a really huge task because no one else no one knew what to do my my mom who actually has similar textured hair to me would only ever knew how to chemically straighten hair and do and like manage the hair in that state. So as soon as I turned like eight, that's what she started doing with my hair. So I didn't actually know anything about handling my natural hair. Um, and then in 2014, after a whole long like curb of learning by ordering books, there was no YouTube like influences back then. There were no blogs. I just had to order the books and most of them were also about chemically straightening. Uh, so it wasn't actually that useful. So I just kept on like diving into the science of hair. Um, and I kind of had it figured out until, <laughs> until I moved to New Zealand, which had completely different products. So <laughs> completely different products, completely different um, climate and yeah, and completely different water as well. So 
I felt like every time I moved, I had to like reset my, um, my hair care routine. And that's, I was like, this must be happening to so many people um, where they've had to just like start to relearn their hair um, over the years. And so I started the Organic Afro um, in 2014. That's the Facebook group. And I'm on a mission to decolonize and liberate beauty through celebration and education and empowerment. I've worked in the beauty industry like off and on um, since I was 18. Um, and I actually hated the beauty industry. I, I was just doing it because like I had to, you know, make my way through university, but there, and there was nowhere to like, no one to talk to about like the no representation, the products that didn't work for me. Um, and I, so then I also ended up working in the black hair industry to kind of help get good products out. Um, and last year I became a certified hair practitioner with the, um, in, with the International Association of Trichology, of Trichologists. So I'm now certified um, and I'm bringing more science-based real facts to people to make this an easier process. So I'm basically good at helping to make people, helping to make caring for Afro kinky coily hair simple. Um, this yeah I just think that it's not you know it doesn't it, it nothing has to be that hard um and usually if caring for natural hair has been challenging it's because you've learned techniques that aren't useful for natural or curly hair and to be honest like most people learn about how to like wash their hair or what to do with their hair from like TV adverts um, and the back of product bottles, like following the instructions, which are actually written to market the product, not actually written for the care of the hair, right? So don't worry if you've been confused because there is loads of misinformation around. Um, and, you know, that's something that we have to deal with as we're a part of this whole, you know, uh, internet reality. <laughs> but um, today we're not going to be talking about forcing your little one's hair to look anything other than its natural state we're not going to be talking about using thousands of products because I know there are people who just want a product that makes everything better and that's not how this works um, and it's not about long and complicated routines I'm just going to be going through some essentials and answering your questions um, that came through on the post so we'll be covering what um, should or shouldn't well care hair look like? When does the texture come through in at what age? Um, Pre-poo and combing. So pre-poo is a very funny word, but it'll make sense to you when we go through it. Um, washing and scalp care, best products and tools and kind of how to look out for them. Um, moisturizing, nighttime, swimming and summer care, because uh, that those questions came up in there. Um, but the next session will be about alopecia, which is it's basically an endemic to um, the black community at the moment because of the way that we've been sort of forced to style our hair. Um, and then we're also going to talk about styles and styling products and, um, you know, toddler styles for those regally little ones. Um, so what should or shouldn't well care hair look like? So if we first start thinking about um, what's unique to Afro hair um, or kinky curly hair, whatever you want to call it, natural hair, um, it's made out of like these little factories in our scalps um, that are oval and elliptical shaped. So the follicles are actually shaped in an oval or elliptical, which is different to straight hair, which is actually um, a circular follicle. And just like a little geeky note there, it's not just about like if you look, um, if you did like a bird's eye view, you would see for straight hair a circle, right? And the actual follicle would be a cylinder going the way, like going into the um, into the scalp. But with Afro hair, it's not just an oval or elliptical shape from bird's eye view. It's actually an elliptical or oval shape going um, like a curved shape. The follicle is actually a curved shape. It's a curved factory versus a cylinder factory. So that's why it um, it kind of handles differently as well from the root. So we know the structure is different. It's also more susceptible to specific types of alopecia. So there are there are genetic precursors for alopecia um, that you know some people can take all the care in the hair, like all the care they can of their hair, but 
genetically they're predisposed to alopecia and that's okay um, but there are ways that we can prevent triggering it um, what's different is also how we've been made to feel about it um, and also the patterns can change um, with different length so how long the hair is um, and also with age well it's more noticeable um, with afro hair but sometimes um, you can also notice the same with straight hair um, that the texture can change with age. So what it, what should it look like? Um, it should be strong and pliable. So you should be able to you know bend it without it snapping or breaking. Um, it should have some bounce to it, um, and it has like a glow. It doesn't. It's not shiny like straight hair. We're not trying to achieve like a shine. It's more of a glow because the the shape of the hair structure actually refracts light. It doesn't reflect it. So it's going off in different. So it, if the hair doesn't look shiny, don't worry, it's still healthy. Because <laughs> even um, black people still think that, you know, that shiny hair means healthy hair when really we're still using Eurocentric um, standards to judge the health of the hair, which is obviously it's completely a different shape. So would react differently to light. So it shouldn't um, look off your like unintentionally matted hair. So you can, for example, intentionally matted hair are dreadlocks. So you can actually do free form dreadlocks or you can do like individually um, intentionally shaped dreadlocks where that's the intention to mat the hair. But when it comes to like clumping and it's all like stuck together, um, and it's like, you know, causing itching and things like that. That's not what it should look like. It shouldn't feel too brittle um, and it shouldn't also feel completely soft or limp because I know some people are like, oh, I found this amazing product, this great treatment. It makes my hair so soft, but actually that's uh, damaging the structure of the hair. So it doesn't have as much hold. So I know that's probably a lot of information there, but take from it what what you will it's just about maybe focusing on what it should feel at, like and that it should be able to you should be able to style it you should be able to you know plait it or twist it um it should have some bounce and it should glow now i really wanted to do a quick note on how we talk about hair um, and the systems that people use to talk about um, the hair types now Personally, I'm kind, I'm, I don't use this Andre Walker system um, because it is entrenched in, um, in basically Eurocentric beauty um, standard as well as the lab system. So as you can see, they've always got like straight hair as number one. And it's like, why is that the one, why are we comparing the, you know, different types of hair to straight hair. Like, why is that the norm? Why is white the norm? Um, because that's the society that we are, you know, that we're in at the moment. Um, that's the paradigm that we're in. So when we do that, there's like, it's like that's, compares, that's comparing to the norm, which is not true because there are millions and millions of people on the planet with non-straight hair. And even people who have straight hair often have waves and things like that. So um, it's a bit... Yeah, it's a bit strange to me. Um, and also, Andre Walker himself said some really outrageous things about um, anyone who had like 3C up to 4C hair saying that they needed to chemically straighten it and stuff. So I don't use that system. This is the lab system. They use this in um, actually doing like making products. I don't use it either because, you know, of just the way it's like rating things from like one onwards. Um, but for me personally, I prefer to use the um, LOIS system because it's talking about actually the shape of the hair instead. Um, so this is the L shape, the L shaped strand. This is the coily O shaped strand. Then you've got a straight strand, then you've got a wavy strand. So you're talking about L for the L, sh L shape, O for the O shape, I for the straight, and then S for the the um, S shape wave. Um, also another really quick thing about um, hair typing leads us into the texture and when it comes in because um, hair changes. So if we just keep on identifying with like one type of um, texture, that might not be actually true for how our hair stays. Um, 
for example, like some children are born with the hair texture that they have for most of their lives. And then some babies experience hair loss and then new growth has a different texture. Um, but in general, like hair can change every seven years. Um, and puberty and menopause can often trigger changes um, in follicle shape. So different texture as well. Um, for example, like this is me when I was, I think I was four or five. I had um, really like what in South Africa they call like a straight strand. So although I had quite big coils, um, it was really easy to manage it using like Euro European um, techniques. Then when I turned seven, um, my hair completely changed. You can't really see it unless you like look quite closely, but you can kind of see a different change in the texture there. And that caused my parents and my grandma to freak out because they didn't know what to do. Um, and then this picture here is of me today. Um, and my hair actually has um, multiple textures in it. So when one section looks like dry, it's not actually dry. There's just like one section, like I have a couple of sections that um, are just like a completely different texture. And then at the back of my hair, I have like some looser curls and it just does what it wants to. So it's fine. It's natural. It's, we don't have to have a universal curl all over our scalp. So if you're worried about that, if this, you know, if the hair is, look, looks different in different places, that can also be completely no normal. <laughs> um, so with the whole pre poo business, this is really important um, because it, it's just about combing the hair out before you wash the hair um, because I know people find it really easy to comb the hair when it's wet and like you, when you've got your conditioner in it and things like that but that's actually weakening um, weakening the hair because it's the, the actual um, the bonds are broken down in in the uh, when they're saturated when the hair saturated the bonds are broken and then when you comb through it it's like actually causing kind of more damage so um, in terms of pre-poo, what that is, is just like dampening the hair and using a light oil um, to comb it out before you actually wash the hair. This can be done be like right before you wash the hair or it can be done a couple of days before. Um, I do it like currently my hair is actually in a pre-poo style because um, I put it in sections. It needs to be washed tomorrow. So I put it in sections, combed it all out. Um, and then put it back. So now it's ready for when I wash my hair tomorrow morning, um, it's in sections already. Um, a really good tip for doing this is to make sure that you are holding um, the ends, like each section of the hair, you're holding kind of the end inch or so, and you're focusing on brushing out that, um, that inch and then you move up until you reach the roots. So you wanna actually start from the ends of the hair, not from the root when you're combing curly and Afro hair. This is um, also good because it makes it less painful. Um, and if the kid has a really um, sensitive scalp, you can get them to hold the hair at the root while you brush, while you're holding the rest of it. Cause it means that it's taking um, less um, pressure off the scalp. Um, so yeah, this is, really important because it's also really good for shedding so it means that you're getting rid of all of the um the shed hair that gets tangled um that and it prevents um tangling during washing as well so and you'll also have less um shed hair to like vacuum up um around the place if you regularly do this um so that's really important it's something that is yeah i'm really passionate about people understanding that um and then scalp care is obviously the foundation of healthy hair care, but it's the most overlooked. Um, so just been looking at time, cool. Um, so we should be washing our, our hair every seven to 10 days. Um, Afro kinky curly coily hair does not need to be washed every day unless you have like exceptionally oily scalp um, and oily hair and obviously wash it more frequently, especially if someone's like super active, then you can wash it every other day, but don't wash it every day. And also don't not wash it at all. <laughs> um, and it doesn't matter what style they're wearing. Cause I know that kids are gonna, you know, love their braids or their, um, or their caners or whatever they want to get. The hair still needs to be washed, even if it's um, in 
a style. And in terms of synthetic hair, if, you, if you're doing extensions and things like that, the synthetic hair should also be cleansed before installation. That's really important because that stuff is really is coated, especially on the initial styling. It's coated with chemicals to make it look super shiny. And that is really irritating for the scalp. So if they want to get synthetic extensions, then make sure to do that. And I'm going to speak more about synthetic extensions in the next session because um, there's so much that I have to say about that. But um, in terms of, yeah, like just making sure that the scalp is clean um, because if you don't, then it's going to start like fungi and microorganisms are going to lead to like uh, irritation, itchy, itchiness, and then they're going to be it's gonna cause like longer term problems. So like I said, wash cycles will really depend on how um, active the oil, the sebum is, uh, the sebum glands are on the scalp, but every seven to 10 days okay? um, or every two to four days if they're very active. Um, I'm gonna like, yeah. So just make sure, don't worry about the rest of that. That's just way too involved <laughs> right now. Just make sure that you have a, a shampoo every seven to 10 days um, and basically focus on having a moisturizing shampoo at this point um, more than a like stripping one because um, the hair just needs to have as much moisture as possible. Um, I was just going to quickly say that I have a client called Jess and she is really active and she was really worried about, uh, she was overwashing her hair and she found that with less washing her hair it was actually in better shape because um, she is a gym junkie and it really worked for her. So wash time, washing techniques, I wanted to say two really quickly um, for a baby and for toddler and then also children with longer hair. So for a baby, once a week is fine. Always my whole like philosophy is around natural products. Um, so a natural gentle cleanser would be fine for a baby. Um, you know, using fingers to comb damp hair before washing, um, wetting the scalp, wetting the hair with lukewarm water, gently massaging um, the scalp with your fingertips. And then gently rinsing out the shampoo and dabbing out excess um, water with a um, with a microfiber towel would be great. You can add a tiny bit of conditioner if if required, but really with babies, less is more because they're not really that sweaty and they don't really produce that much oil. Um, you can also apply some um, light oil, um, like a yojoba oil, um, to their hair as well. But the point of like dabbing the hair dry after dabbing the excess water out of the hair after shampooing is really important because it will help the conditioner actually work better. In terms of toddlers and older children and children with longer hair, you can also wash, as I was saying before, how I do myself, um, you can do it in sections. So once you've combed out the hair and you've got it in sections, it's actually easier to work with the scalp because um, kinky curly curly hair um, can be very dense um, and it can be kind of like more difficult to reach the scalp so you can put it in sections pin it back and just work those areas when you're using a shampoo um, on longer hair just make sure that you're only because shampoos are actually only there to you should just be washing the scalp really that's what they're supposed to do any re residual runoff will cleanse the length of the hair because that's not where the oil is in terms of afro and, and natural hair um so you're going to be focusing on that um obviously if you've used a super strong gel then you're going to want to like get the shampoo um through the through the length of the hair um if necessary but i would try to like stay away from that because that will just end up making the hair drier as well um and then once you've done that um so once you've shampooed and conditioned you can then follow up with a deep conditioner um some like you just have to kind of figure out note like notice what the hair is needing um and then you can throw in a deep conditioner um when you think they're old enough to do that and when they're going to sit still enough or when it's going <laughs> to when it's going to work for them um or even once a month is fine just to get the moisture level levels up so 
moisturizing for babies, like I said, you can add a little amount of oil to like hold in that moisture, but avoid any concentrated or um, essential oils because um, children under three can have allergic reactions and it can be really strong for their skin and scalp. So avoid those. Um, and yeah, once again, do it after dabbing their hair dry um, with a towel. Then with the um, toddlers and older kids, um, I recommend always doing the moisturizing after straight as soon as possible after washing the hair because the hair is actually saturated at that point. Um, and that's how you're gonna hold in that moisture. So I'm a huge fan of the liquid cream oil method. So the liquid is water, you've saturated the hair and then you've kind of dabbed it, um, dabbed the excess water out. Then you go in with a moisturizing cream and then you seal in the moisturizing properties with an oil. Um, because if you do it the other way, um, the hair is already going to be sealed with an oil and then the moisturizing product is just going to sit on the surface. Because I know that there are some people who are talking about, you know, school of thought, um, uh, the LOC method, but I'm all about the LCO method because then the oil can actually be that protective barrier to hold in the moisture. In terms of how much you use, Oh yeah, sorry. Once once again, you need to be working from the ends of the hair up to the root, not the other way around, because our scalp will produce sebum. It's just the rest of the hair is going to struggle to receive that oil because of the shape of the, the hair structure. So um, in, in terms of the um, amount that you use, the hair is supposed to absorb the product. It shouldn't be sitting on the surface. So you just want to make sure that like always start less is more. So if you need to build up, then you build up. But if you um, are using more product, it's gonna make the hair heavier. It's gonna cause more static. And yeah, it can actually be worse for the hair as well because it can cause damage. Um, but yeah, if you, do it in the, if you do it in sections, it's so much easier. And then you can style from there um, really easily. So about essential products, like I said, I'm all about natural um, products, but for now you're probably looking at just a moisturizing shampoo and a moisturizing conditioner and a moisturizing cream, then an oil. So don't worry about the other stuff. For now, you just wanna make sure that the products that you have are moisturizing um, and then you've got an oil that's light that kind of um, emulates the way sebum works like coconut, yojoba and grapeseed. Um, for thick hair, castor oil is fine, but if you've got finer, if you're dealing with finer hair, um, then that's going to be too heavy um, and it can end up like damaging the hair like in, with long-term use and the, the shape of the, it won't bounce basically. You will see that it's going to be too heavy and weighing down um, the hair. And just a note with the coconut oil, um, if you use it in winter, you might notice that it becomes crunchy but in summer, it actually it's warmer, so it doesn't actually get like harden. Um, there are some oils that don't do that, like some coconut oils that don't do it. Um, but if you notice that yours is making your hair crunchy, then you can just change um, to another lightweight oil, like like the ones I suggested, or even um, something like a olive oil um, or avocado oil, whatever you've got. Um, will work. So when you're looking for moisturizing properties in products, you want to make sure that you've got water in the first five products. Um, aloe vera is a really popular um, uh, ingredient as well for moisture. Olive oil and coconut oil are great at retaining moisture. All of these um, alcohols here, so the cetyl, cetereal, stereol, and laurel are actually all fatty, um, fatty alcohols so they're good for the hair they're not the drying ones so if, if your moisturizing product has that in it then it's fine also the hen trimonium chloride is actually a natural derivative um, so don't be scared of it and also there's um hyalur hyaluronic acid which is also really good for moisturizing it just looks like a scary word but it's actually natural and it's really good um, these are some ingredients to avoid because they're drying and also bad for our health. Um, but your silicones, um, sulfates are really common. Phthalates are common as well. Petroleum um, and, and, they, and mineral, mineral oils, drying alcohols, like 
there are a whole bunch of them and they often change the names of stuff so that it's harder to find out. Um, but Paula's Choice has a really great website where you can, if you're if you're like looking at your products and think and trying to figure it out, you can type in, um, you can type in the name of the ingredient and it'll come up whether it's been like test, like what what the tests have come out, whether it's um, damaging or harmful, or if it's okay. So that's a really good um, website to have a look at. It's Paula's Choice. Um, essential tools. So I really, um, I love a good water filter because there's so many minerals and um, lime scale and all of this stuff that is in water, especially if you're in a densely populated area. Uh, I know London is really, really bad um, with the quality of water. So a water filter I have one in the bathroom and we also have one in the kitchen so that when we're drinking the water, we're not drinking in all those nasties, um, which will also then affect the, you know, the dryness of the skin and hair as well. Um, I'm a huge fan of a misting spray bottle. Now these ones are misting like for tropical plants and stuff. It's really good because it's not going to saturate the hair when you, um, when you dampen the hair before combing out and things like that. Um, I love a good wide tooth comb um, on the, I have a list of um, list of tools and products. There's this fantastic vulcanized rubber comb that is a lifesaver that will cut down your time, your combing time down dramatically um, and it doesn't have any static. So that's great. Um, silk pillowcases, I'm a huge fan of. This is a part of the nighttime routine. You can use a silk uh, pillowcase or a bonnet. I'm a fan of pillowcases because they don't fall off your head and they don't get too hot um, and I know kids can be wriggly um, at night and can get irritated with, like stuff on their heads so if bonnet doesn't work for you pillowcase is fine hair ties as well like the ones I use are literally are like the hair bands with the um, stick around them microfiber towel is great because it's really soft if you don't have one of those you can use an old t-shirt um don't try not to use a normal towel because that's going to remove way too much moisture um, from the hair um and I wouldn't really worry about the dry diffuser unless you live in a really really cold uh climate get yourself a dryer diffuser for your hair dryer so that you can um really quickly um dry the hair without it um getting too much moisture taken out and keeping the, the form of the, the hair. So nighttime, we wanna aim for less friction. Like I said, silk pillowcase or bonnet. You can oil the ends of the hair every other day as well. Um, I need to get into a habit of that. I'm not a fan of oiling my hair like too much, but it's necessary, especially if it's drier, like with the weather and things like that. Um, and you can put the hair in big twists, plaits or pineapple, which is where you just like, <laughs> you can pile all the hair up and then tie it in like a, with a hairband um, to have it all out of the face and out of the way for sleeping time. You can also use, um, there are like these kind of hiking, hikers kind of use them to like keep the hair back. If you can get a silk lined one, that would be amazing. And you can literally just put all the hair in there and it kind of goes into like the cylinder and it's out of the way. It looks hilarious, but it's um, it works and it keeps the form of the curls if, you're, if you've got the hair loose. For swimming, um, a sole cap is a really great solution. They're actually swimming caps designed for people who have massive hair. Um, I This is a really great method because it's a barrier um, to the actual chlorine and to the water. Uh, if you're going to be swimming all the time, that's going to mean that you're going to be changing, like you're basically going to be affecting the bonds of the hair all the time, um, which is not really the best for, um, you know, textured hair. So try to get a sole cap. And if you don't have a sole cap or you don't have something like that, um, you can oil the hair before um, swimming and put it in uh, plaits or um, cane rows or twists or a bun um, so that the, the form of the hair is together. A bun is not the best solution, but just to make sure that the hair is not kind of flapping about loose um, in the water. Although kids, I know personally as a kid, I loved the feeling of having my hair like a mermaid and it just felt like so long and cool, but 
it was damaging. Um, I had terrible, terrible chlorine damage to my hair when I was swimming um, as a kid every day. Um, so you can also use a gentle shampoo or a co-wash, which is a conditioner wash. It's like a gentle, like a super gentle shampoo. Um, I wouldn't really recommend it to, to use it all the time, but just make sure that you're rinsing the hair out once you've gotten out of the pool um, and skin as well. Just, you know, you take a shower after you get out of the pool, um, do the same with your hair um, and then just make sure that it's kind of like in a, in a protective style that's out of the way that's not kind of um, loose at the ends because that's gonna cause damage. Um, just let's have a look. Okay. Um, so the best way to get natural thriving hair um, well, I really believe in working together and having the support, having ongoing support. I love doing workshops and I love doing one-to-ones, but what I find out that my clients generally want to have me there like each step of the way, because then they'll, they'll figure out something um, and then more questions will come up because they've, you know, the, the base level of um, understanding has like increased and then new questions come up because they're gonna be exploring how to style and how to work with their hair as well. So at the end of this month, I'm actually opening the Organic Afro Circle, which is a private membership de dedicated to celebrating and liberating um, beauty and natural hair care. So it'll mean that you'll get um, access to a private practice private discord group where you can ask questions in there and get prompt um, re responses there'll be fortnightly group zoom calls expert training as well as um, access to learning materials and I'm also working on some other special um, bits and bobs for the group as well so if you're interested in having that ongoing support definitely join the the wait list and become a founding member of the organic afro um, circle um, otherwise, you can find me on the Organic Afro um, community on Facebook if you're on Facebook and you can drop me questions there. Um, just before we go into the last, uh, just a couple of last bits and bobs, I wanted to just say that hair loss is happening earlier and earlier because of the, the pressures that we're putting um, on black hair. So investing time now to understand the hair will actually ensure that more of their follicles will stay along for their lifelong ride. Um, and it also helped them feel more confident in connecting with their natural selves as well. Um, so it's what you're doing is really great. And what, and actually paying attention to this detail is more than my own mom did. So it's really great to see that out there um, for kids these days. Um, and also, question for you, what's one thing that you'll be able to implement this week from what you've learned? If you want to put in the chat anything, any little nugget of gold information, um, let me know what's one thing that will be easily implementable for you this week. Okay. I haven't got a silk pillow, so I think that's where I'm going this <laughs> yeah. weekend. Treat yourself, treat yourself. You <laughs> can obviously get satin as well, but just make sure that you don't get anything that's polyester because the plastic will cause static. Right. Um, anyone else? Um, Ellen says, I think oiling the ends of the hair. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so... I just wanted to finish with a quote. Um, uh, no, sorry, I was just going to say, Nora said, uh, wash the silk pillow case. I bought my girl, so she'll be able to use it. Great. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And remembering, yeah, we need to wash them as well so that we can get rid of all the oils and things like that. Um, so Bell Hooks, um, what a queen, said, if we give our children sound self-love, they will be able to deal with whatever life puts before them. Um, and that's exactly what you're doing, teaching them to love and care for themselves. So brilliant work, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Natalia from the Organic Afro. And yeah, you can you can join the Organic Afro community and um, drop any questions. I go live um, 
Tuesdays, like every other Tuesday, and I answer questions. So if you have questions um, from this session or just in general, then you can drop your questions in there and I will answer them. And I think, I mean, I'm good to, you know, hang around for a few questions if you have them. I've got like a couple minutes. Anyone want to um, ask Natalia a question now? Got her. Eleanor. Hi, can I use the, the voice because... Yeah, of course. Yes, think, of course. <laughs> my little phone. Uh, uh, sorry, I'll also start. Hello. Hi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Apologies, I look like like I feel. And not at and all. <laughs> no apologies needed. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pretend. Uh, so anyway, thank you for your presentation. Unfortunately, I missed some of it. Um, but um, I, uh, I just wanted to, to ask you about the oil. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, I started with oil, especially yo yoba, jojoba. Mm -hmm. um, um, I even put it on my face. I mean, I like it because it's very light, but mm -hmm. also, you know, it keeps things supple. And of course, the LCO, the LOC, uh, liquid cream oil. <laughs> and then somebody said, for you know, several people um, in the various groups I am in, they said, but oil actually, it's okay. it locks in the moisture when you put it on, but then the next day, how is the next day's moisture going to go in when you refresh the curls yes. with your spray and so on? So I'm like, mm. so this is exactly. I wanted to why, know what you thought about that. This is exactly why, if you use the cream then oil, you won't even have to be refreshing the next day. Like it, it will actually lock because it's actually going to be locking that in. Um, like. So for me personally and for all the clients that I had, they've all said um, that when they actually like use the LCO method rather than putting the oil first, um, it's that moisture mm -hmm. being kept in by the oil. Um, and then the, so the moisture from the moisturizing cream is actually being locked in by the oil. And actually oils mm -hmm. like Yoba, um, when used in this method. So generally those oils, a yojoba, grapeseed, coconut, actually have this amazing property that really replicates the function of sebum because um, it the way that the oil is structurally, it allows moisture to from the air to come in and it also locks in the moisture that's already there, um, okay. which is really like which is really great because that's what sebum does so although the hair might look like it's drier or it's you know it's it's not as shiny or whatever it was like when you first applied the cream and oil it it is actually it is actually moisturized it just doesn't look like it has the product sitting on the surface um mm -hmm. but yeah if you if you use oil on its own um it depends on how the like how the actual hair is itself if you've got um if you've got more of a like s shape um or straight hair or loose curls then you might get away with just using an oil um because the moisture will be the moisture that it will be able to get in will be fine but if you've got um more of a kinky um strand or more tightly curled then you want to have a cream in there as well because mm -hmm. it just needs that extra support of moisture okay thank you no worries <laughs> let me know how you go <laughs> okay <laughs> where am I? and then one more question Susanna. just ask one thing i don't know if anybody would know um where you can find products in the Eurozone. <laughs> I'm in Ireland, so getting products in the UK, it's just not worth it at the moment with uh, Brexit. Uh, okay. And the US is not really worth it either. Uh, so it's fairly expensive from either place. Yeah. So do you have any recommendations within the Eurozone? 
Um, I actually need to look into that more because this is something that a lot of my clients are coming up against. Um, if there are some brands that are available, I'm not sure, you know, how Amazon is for you. And I know that people try to get away from using Amazon and I'm trying to get away from it as well. But unfortunately, they often have the best shipping um, in terms of being able to get the product and also not pay an arm and a leg for shipping. Um, so you can have a look on Amazon um, for the product and, and then you'll get less shipping. I am looking for a kind of European hub um, for, for um, natural hair, but the problem is like the ones that I'm finding at the moment don't have, like I would not recommend the products on them because they're like filled with all like random stuff that I wouldn't want to recommend. Um, but try Amazon. There is a there is a brand called Buchlam, and I think that they're okay for shipping. I think I think that they're okay with shipping to Ireland. Um, but yeah, it's that's a really good question. I'm just gonna take a note of that because I I really want to um, find the solution to that. Um, otherwise you can try your, um, I don't know if they, if you've got any, um, black hair shops in your area, if that exists, um, but you can try going there. You're going to be bombarded mm -hmm. with like a whole bunch of like crazy products everywhere. Um, but if you go in with the like list of, um, ingredients to avoid and the list of ingredients that you're looking for, then you can kind of find, um, what would be suitable. And actually, if you have like a Holland and Barrett, um, I'm not sure, does Ireland have Holland? Yeah, Holland and Barrett, you can find. Yes, we do, we um, boot, we boot as well. Oh yeah, great, so you can have a look for Sukin. Um, I love Sukin. They've got really yeah. great ingredients and it works really well um, for natural hair. Um, so Sukin's a good brand um, for a really cleansing shampoo. Um, like really deeply cleansing shampoo. You can um, have a look at uh, Faith in Nature. I believe Boots have them as well, um, but it could their, their shampoos could be a little bit too stripping. Um, but the most like I've used them before um, and they're fine. Um, I just didn't need to uh, like I would stay away from the tea tree oil one because that's a like it's a really deep cleanse which can strip the um scalp and hair a bit too much if you're using it too often but the one that's like a coconut one that's that's usable and that's faith in nature um but if you can get your hands on sukin um it's like i really love their products um oh yeah i'll type it in here so it's sukin and then the other one is Buchlen. um yeah, um, you can also get, um, what is it now? Shea Moisture is available at Boots. Um, yes. Yeah, we have. Yeah, like. We have, remember the other one that I used. 